Hello, Hofstra fans, and welcome to another WB Mason Coaches Report with Seth Tierney, the head coach of Hofstra Men's Lacrosse. Good morning, Seth. How's it going today? Good morning, Nick. Thanks for having me. No problem. It's a pleasure to have you on. Uh, you guys are coming off of a what was essentially a CAA championship spot clinching win uh, against Fairfield, 18 to 14. Um, Tom Ford was unfortunately unable to go to that in that game, but and you guys turned to Timothy Hegarty. You know, uh, what was behind the decision to to start Tim? And, you know, what did you see from his performance against the Stags? Yeah, I mean, listen, certainly we, we, we missed Tom Ford. He <clears throat> he started all year for us, um, understands the defense really well. And but Tim is right there with him. And uh, so, you know, it was, uh, you know, we have a, a depth chart. And if Tom Ford went down, then Tim Hegarty would step in. And, and Tim's voice is great. His understanding of the defense is great. And he did a nice job. There's no getting around it in a, in, in a must-win game uh, to in, insert someone that hasn't gotten a whole lot of playing time. Uh, certainly nerve-wracking. Didn't have Alex Kincannon. Uh, Justin Sykes, you know, still banged up a little bit. And so, you know, to have three starters – not be there uh, in in a in a must win situation certainly didn't make things any easier for our guys or for the staff, but for those guys that replaced those guys, uh, they did a good job stepping up, and uh, so we were thrilled about what uh, what Tim Hegarty was able to do, and uh, and very fortunate we got the win. Yeah, you know it's it's never easy for for a guy to come off the bench like that in what was you know what turned out being the most important game of the year. Yep. And to put it in a performance like he did, you know, and, and same thing goes with Bryce Tolmy, you know, uh, same thing goes with Dylan McIntosh down at, down at attack. And speaking of sure. Dylan, you know, uh, that was such a performance by him, you know, four goals and an assist, all four goals came in that second half, you know, talk, talk a little bit about uh, Dylan. Cause he's, he's a guy who's been around the program for a while and, you know, he's, he's had his fair share of uh, unfortunate injuries and, you know, just talk about yeah, no, um, Dylan. Dylan's a guy that certainly has had some hardship uh, with a, a jaw injury, a knee injury, and then a rehab setback with COVID, um, you know, when, when he went back home. And uh, so, you know, it took a little time to get him back to where we hoped he was. And then when he did get back, he was a little bit snake bitten, right? Just, you know, couldn't get that, that, that those situations. We put him at, at, at midfield, hoping that that would be a better move for him. Can he play 60 minutes? You know, what's that going to be like? And then, um, you know, recently in practice, he's just been doing very well. And uh, I, I know that him and Ryan and, and Justin Linsky have some some chemistry. Uh, so, you know, the decision was made. Coach Mack is the one that brought it up. And uh, and he did, a, he did a great job of just being composed, uh, playing without the ball, uh, certainly capable of, uh, of running past some people, which he's done. And, uh, and for him to put up four in that game, um, you know, and you win 18, 14, those four goals are important. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, like you said, he's been snake bitten this year. He's been put, he's in, he's in put in, uh, positions to, to score or assist in one way or another. It just you know, hasn't found the back of the net for him. So, you know, you guys did your job against Fairfield at 18 to 14 win, and then you needed a little help uh, to get into the CAA tournament. Uh, and you got that help it, it, by the narrowest of margins with that. Uh, I think it was 12, 11 win for Drexel over Towson. You know, watching that game, you know, from Drexel trailing at halftime to their dramatic win, you know, what were your thoughts? What were your feelings during that, during watching? Yeah, that? yeah. I mean, Coach Volker and I, uh, we go back a long way. Uh, 1987, uh, we were, uh, we started to become teammates and roommates at Hopkins together uh, and have been pretty, uh, pretty close uh, all the way through to, you know, to the, to, to today. And, um, you know, we, he knew that we needed them to win. Uh, we knew that we needed them to win. And uh, it was, uh, it, it was pretty, it, it was a pretty dramatic way as they didn't take the lead until 11 seconds left in the game uh, to, to seal it. So they were behind for 59 minutes and 49 seconds until they threw one in the goal to go ahead by one and then sealed it when, <clears throat> when Jimmy, you know, tied them up at the faceoff X and, uh, and, and that sealed the victory. So, you know, it's not easy when you have to go two for two or, or even more at times, but you know, that, that, that Friday night, we, we checked the first box on Saturday at noon. Uh, the, the second box gets checked. And then, like you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, now everybody is zero and zero. Everybody had, you know, wonderful season. Congrats on getting in. 
and now it's four teams enter and uh, one team will be two and zero uh, on Saturday. And that's the team that'll go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, we know that, that Drexel and Delaware with their body of work, they may be up for uh, at large consideration, depending on what goes on just from our conference. Um, but now we would like to, we'd like to upset that apple cart in, in our new season and, uh, and we'll see what happens on Thursday. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I not, I'm sure. I know for a fact that everyone, uh, Hofstra, the Hofstra community would love to see the pride you guys and the pride go as long as, as long as possible, you know, extending your season. Um, you know, this, uh, this Thursday's opponent is Delaware. Uh, the last time you played them, it was a 14, 13 overtime loss at Stewart. From when you last played them on April 17th to now, what kind of changes have you seen from Delaware? And, you know, how do you, how well do you find that you match up against the Blue Ends? Yeah, I mean, I think that if everybody looks at the, the scores, the games, uh, especially when the second time you play an opponent, uh, every game takes on a whole new meaning. Every game's story is written differently. Um, you know, there are teams that can score in the high teens one game and then be in the single digits the next game. So, you know, it, it's, it's who's going to show up, who's going to settle in to this, this lacrosse game uh, sooner, and then the team that makes the least mistakes uh, going forward. We know, you know, we know what Delaware is about. Um, certainly very talented and well-coached. Uh, offensively, their attack is, is lights out, you know, uh, the way they can shoot it, the way they dodge it and the way they share it. Uh, it's something that we had to take, uh, we got to take notice of, obviously they, uh, their attack had 12 out of the 14 goals. The first time we played them, um, we were up 10, six going into the fourth quarter and then their attack kind of <coughs> got everything rolling for them on their middies did a good job. So they've got more than capable middies, um, you know, with a, you know, a little bit of a Canadian flair and, uh, and those guys, you know, you, we got to pay attention to everybody down there. They got, you know, always have six guys on the field that will be dangerous. Uh, the faceoff game will be a battle. Uh, their long stick middies can cause a little bit of havoc in the middle of the field. And then certainly defensively, their goalie has played well. And then defensively, they're pretty active, right? They, uh, they had shut Ryan uh, with Owen Grant, uh, a tremendous defenseman from Delaware. And, uh, you know, we'll prepare for that. We'll prepare for any changes that, that, that they could make so that when the game time, when the whistle blows, we'll see how they're playing it. And then we'll make our adjustments and, and go from there. And I'm sure they'll do the same on the other end of the field. And uh, it'll be, a, uh, you know, a full speed chess match for, for two hours on Thursday, starting at four o'clock. Yeah, absolutely. And you, know, you mentioned the chess match, you know, the, that's gonna That's, it was, I feel like it was a chess match the last time you guys played. And now it's going to be an even heightened chess match with, sure. you know, the prospect of an, of an AQ bid on the line. Yep. No, no question. So uh, again, it's it, now we're, we're in this next season where it's survive in advance. Uh, you know, nobody has to win a beauty contest here. You just got to win by one and, and survive in advance, knowing that there'll be, a, you know, you'll get a chance to get another story written a couple of days later. So, um, you know, again, practicing this week, trying to stay focused, uh, trying to, uh, you know, clean up some mistakes that we had versus Fairfield, uh, refresh ourselves with the, with the Delaware personnel and, uh, and then just get ourselves in a good mental state. Yeah, yeah, we put it, we put it perfectly. So it'll be this this Thursday, uh, May May sixth at four p.m. against Delaware on the LAC Sports Network. You can follow all of Hofstra Men's Across on GoHofstra.com and across all social media platforms at Hofstra and LAX. For head coach Seth Tierney, I am Nick Capitos, and thank you for joining us for another WB Mason Coaches.